Okay, uh, can you able to see my screen, guys? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, let's discuss about the uh, uh, we generally call PTP cycle. Okay, that we already had a discussion. Okay, uh, in the previously. Okay, so these are uh, this is a major topic which is a uh, uh, general topic in the MM. Okay, and we have the uh, special procurement scenarios. who join today at the class okay just try to understand okay if you still have the doubts we can have a separate section and i will explain about the topics okay so <coughs> special procurement scenarios uh, like we have one is a uh, third party and the consignment process and subcontracting stock transport order and the RTP returnable transport packaging RTP is nothing but like a returnable transport packaging and we have invoice plan and the procurement uh, sales order that means it's only for the uh, sales order stock. You can say sales order stock. Okay. And the same like procurement. Project order stock. And procurement. For uh, maintenance order. and procurement against production order so uh, other than this one we have evaluated receipt settlement ers so these are the uh, special uh, procurement scenarios okay so apart from this PTP cycle, okay. So these are the business process uh, team. So we have uh, different different business process in the market. So if if I started a business, suppose I just started a business, my way of the business is different. And you started a business, your way of the business is different. Like I, I can do trading, and you are doing production. Some one people they are doing the subcontracting, like repacking, packing, machinery. Someone they will be doing that subcontracting and job work. Okay, services. Okay, we have service procurement also. So when we are talking about the material management, the first thing is we always look. Uh, we always talking about the business. So we will take any of the existing business, any of the example business. And then we'll try to understand the, what is the purpose of the business and how this scenario will be mapping to the business. Why? Because going forward, once you complete the SAP MM, okay, you are working as a consultant, okay, but you, sh you should also understand the business. If you not understand the business, then it's very difficult to mapping the, the configuration. Okay, that means to mapping that business requirement into SAP. That was a very difficult. So that's the reason uh, I'm just taking the time for the uh, explaining the business process, obviously. OK, so try to understand. OK, these are a very, very simple process. OK, uh, but for each and every process, there was a uh, slightly difference. OK, so these are all MM, MM process. These are all MM procurement process. So before going to this one, Okay, so I already explained about that material management is handling, material management is handling procurement. That means purchasing. We are not consider, we are not taking care about the any sales, we are not taking care about any production, we are not taking care about any plant maintenance, we are not taking about taking care about any finance or HR or anything. As a MM module, we are taking care about the purchasing purchasing is nothing but like a, we are buying from 
outside. We are buying the product from the outside. OK, that is one concept you need to remember that. OK, the second concept is we are also considering stock. OK, inventory level. OK, when you are receiving the stock from the vendor, how you are managing that, how you are controlling your stock, that is also factor one we are considering. Okay. The third one is verification, invoice verification. So when you receive the stock from the vendor, okay, you also verifying that what bill you they generated. That means you need to pay some amount to the vendor, right? So for that, you need to be verified that okay, how much stock we received, what was the order price, and is this invo invoice is correct or not? Is that mapping or not? So we need to be consider all these factors and we need to be verified the invoice and we need to be approved that. Then only it will be go for the payment. OK, so before going to this basic level, OK. So I'm just explaining for the new people, the old people, uh, they are already joined this course and they are already aware about that, but I'm just explaining about uh, what we are in my areas. Okay. Mem areas are purchasing and inventory management and vendor invoice verification. And here, the here one thing you need to understand. Okay, whenever we are talking about that, majorly we are talking about the vendor only. Some cases only we are talking about the we are talking about the customers. Okay, some cases, not every time, but some cases we are talking about the uh, customer because we have also integrating with the other modules. We integrating with ST, we are integrating with the PP. Some some of the scenarios we are integrating with the other modules. So those cases we are talking about the customer, but 99.9% .9 we are talking about the vendor. So we always handling the vendors. So are you clear about this point? Any doubts on this one? Sir? Yes, please. Sir, once again. We are talking about only vendor. Hello? Yes? Sir, once again, you have repeated, sir. Same. Yeah, please. I, I will repeat that. Okay, now uh, just understand this one. Okay, okay. The MM areas, so material management, SAP MM will handle purchasing, inventory management, vendor invoice verification. These three concepts we are considering. Okay? MM areas. So, what, what do you mean by purchasing? You are buying from the vendor. So, who are, who are they selling the goods? Okay, who are they selling? They, we will call as a vendor. Did you understand what is the meaning of vendor? Yes, understood, sir. Okay. So, whenever we are talking about the MM, material management, we are always talking about the majorly 99.9% .9 vendor. Okay. We are not talking about the customer. We are majorly talking about the vendor. Okay. So, we will not be, we will not bother about the who will be the customer. So, we will not bother about what is the production. Those we will not be considered. Okay, we will be majorly talking about the metal management. It is a completely related to vendor. Okay, that is the first point. Okay, and our areas are purchasing, inventory, invoice. And when I'm just talking about invoice, okay, it is a vendor invoice, not customer billing. Okay. So you need to understand that some terminologies. Okay, purchase order. Order. Okay. This will create a for vendor. Okay. And when we are talking about sales order, can you go on mute, guys? Go on mute. Okay. Okay. When we are talking about the sales order, it is for customer. Okay. The terminology you, you need to understand. Purchase order is for the vendor. And sales order is for the customer. Okay, so we are always talking about a purchase order majorly. 
nine percent we are talking about a purchase order. Only one or two cases which we are talking about a sales order. Okay, that is integrated with SD and MM module. Okay, and when we are talking about production order. We are talking about production order. It is for the production. That means production planning. Okay, it is not our module. Okay, so hope you understand that MM areas are it's only purchasing inventory and in one voice. So we always talking about the vendor. Hope it's clear. Now, now let's go to the uh, topics. Okay, so what do you mean by PTP cycle? Procurement to pay. Okay. When, when you are buying the goods and when you are paying the amount, okay, between the what whatever the steps it is there, this is we call as a procurement to pay cycle. So SAP standard standard SAP they they advise that there was some standard process which normally using the every business. Okay. But it is not necessary. You should follow the same process. They might be have a different process depends on the client. Okay, there might be they are using the different way of the trading. They can use the some third party process, sales, or it might be uh, some subcontracting process, or it may be some written boot transport pipeline, so gas pipelines like that. So there was different different business scenarios we have depends on the client requirement. Okay, now. Just quickly, I'm just uh, explaining about the procurement to pay. The procurement to pay, it will be start with the identification of the requirement. That means when you are buying the goods, first, what is the initial step for uh, for creating the purchase order? By first, you need to understand that what you need. Okay. If you if you know what you need, then only you can buy the product, right? If suppose in my home. I'm looking for the some product like I'm just to uh, planning to buy the uh, home theater. OK, so first you need to understand what configuration it is required, what what, to, um, what type of the uh, home data it is required and how many speakers you are looking for and what is the home base and the sound base. OK, and what was the voltage, how much you want. So that was your planning, right? So the, the initial step, it is like a recommend gathering. Okay, the first initial step is identification of the requirement. So in this step, step one, it is identification of the requirement. Okay. Now, once you identify that, suppose let's say I'm just planning that Sony, uh, which is like 10 watts, so, uh, five plus one speakers. Okay, that was my planning. Now, so I got the requirement. Now, what I need to know, what was the next? What, what was the next planning? If I identify the requirement, what about the next planning? I just need to be find the where is the stores. That means who will be the vendor? Who will be the vendor? So the second step is selection of the supplier. That means source of supply. We generally call it as source of supply. Both are the same. Okay, selection of supplier. Let's say. In the, the same Sony uh, home theater, I can get from the Panasonic, Sony Vision, and uh, Reliance Digital, and from the uh, Pi. Okay, there was four to five electronic stores are there. So these are all suppliers. We can get the same product. Right now, my my problem is where I where I need to buy. So so here, what we'll do in the selection of the supplier. The selection of the supplier, what we'll do, we'll evaluate it. Evaluate the vendors or suppliers. Okay, or suppliers. Okay, based on the based on the price quotation. Right. So now I got the quotation from the each buyer, sorry, each supplier, boss. Uh, I can uh, I can uh, give this product ten thousand rupees. If I go to Reliance Digital, okay, they say that I can give this product 9,500. Okay, if I go to some uh, Sony Vision, they say that 10,500. Okay, Sony Vision, Panasonic, again they say that it is 11,000. 
so like i got the different different prices from the different 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 suppliers so based on the uh, my price quotations i am selecting that selected best vendor select best vendor that means based on the price difference we choose that selected best vendor now let's assume that Reliance Digital is my best vendor. I just choose that. Okay, he is giving for 9,500. That was the best to uh, price for this Sony in the market. Okay, now it is getting for the 9,500. Now immediately, what you will do? Uh, okay, boss, thanks you. Thanks for your uh, quotation. Okay, I'm good with that price, so I will write the order. Okay, I'm just creating the purchase order. Mentioning the purchase order, boss. I need this Sony home theater. With all the characters, whatever it is, you can specify that what the specifications you need, like 10 watts and 5 plus 1 speakers, base how much it is like. We can just mention that in the purchase order. Now this purchase order I will send to vendor. Now what was the next step? Once you once you order this one. once you order this one what is the next step you are monitoring that so what do you mean by monitoring monitoring is nothing but like a once you order that you just follow up into it follow up into the vendor so i just called to release it sir boss i ordered this product can when can i get, expect that okay did you acknowledge that product okay did you dispatch the product when i can get this product okay did you have that um, home delivery so all these factors you are just considering on the you are monitoring in the pivo okay let's assume that okay uh, the vendor supplier he is happy okay he is he ready to he dispatch the goods now i received the stock so i received a stock which we called goods received i just receiving the goods from the uh, supplier so we will do the goods received so in the goods received what i will check i will check that what is the pivo uh purchase order what is the uh, material number which i ordered that means my uh, sony home theater with some uh, parameters which i need to match so while i am doing the goods receipt i'm just uh, verifying that all the parameters which is matching has per my requirement if it is everything it's good then i am accepting that goods receipt if it is not then we will return the goods to the vendor so boss i ordered so sony home theater 10 watts but i received 5 watts of the home theater so please uh, i am returning this one so please send me actual my recommend quantity right then i received this one along this goods receipt i am also receiving that vendor invoice so in vendor invoice what will be happen they saying that boss okay uh, this stock is dispatched to you so please pay amount this is the invoice bill so i'm gen generating the invoice so please check so when once it is received as vendor invoice okay so what what i need to match here so this generally we called as a three way match so what do you mean by three way match pivo price okay, and go gr quantity and invoice value so uh, here you know invoice value so this is the call we are three way match so here we we are validating here okay that means in the pivo price if suppose they are accepted for the 4900 but still i received the invoice with 5 5200 i am not accepting why because because of this 300 400 variance only i order to you okay i am getting the cheap price from you that's why i order suddenly if you are changing the price then i am not accepted as you already accepted your po and with the price of the 4900 so you should raise the po you should raise the invoice with 4900 okay now gr quantity so suppose i ordered two pieces but i received only one pieces one piece but invoice which we received only for two pieces then i will not accept why because i ordered one piece two pieces but i received only one piece again you generated the invoice for the two piece i am not accepting why because you, i didn't receive one i didn't receive two pieces right i will not accept that so this is the way we are matching invoice verification why we are doing vendor invoice verification we need to be uh, consider 
what you are buying product, how much price you are negotiated, those you need to be uh, verified. That's why we are also considering vendor invoice verification and we verify that. Now, suppose everything is good, then I will uh, send this to for payment. Payment to finance team. So this is the this steps we called as a uh, PTP cycle. OK, I will show you one um, uh, diagram so that you will be understand very easily. OK, so this is a uh, uh, hope you are able to see my screen. Did you able to see the screen? The yeah. PPT presentation? Yes. OK, see here the first step is determination of the requirement. That means we already had a discussion about that. What you need, when you need, where you need. And the, when the second step is source determination. Source is, it is nothing but like way, who will be the supplier? OK, then once it is all done, we have selected the vendor and we created a PO and we monitoring the PO, then goods receipt and invoice. So this is the cycle. When we're talking about the standard material management process, PTP cycle, this is the standard process. OK. But it's there is no rule. You should follow this PTP cycle. Depends on the client requirement. You need to follow that. OK, what process they are using based on that you have to map. Are you clear about this one? OK, if you need more more examples, just review on the past recording section. OK, you will be understand. OK, if you have any doubts, we'll discuss in the further tomorrow class. Clear? Clear? Can I go ahead for the next yeah. step? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just please, please note that guys. So this is I'm just repeating for the who joined today. OK, to understand that. But uh, for other team members, they already had a discussion and uh, they already already have the, the idea. OK, you can see that recording videos. And if you still have the doubts, we can repeat that. OK, no problem. OK. And now let's this is the standard as I discussed about this is the standard process. OK, but when we are talking about the special stock requirements, OK, that means every business they are doing different different uh, style of business. If suppose I'm the I'm running the business. I don't want to be uh, follow the standard process might be because uh, uh, I am using the regular vendor might be maybe I have the, some components, but I don't have the production might be. There are so many ways we get uh, might be. We are not following the standard process. OK, depends on the client process. Now these are the, some of the uh, uh, different scenarios, special procurement scenarios. OK, so Let's discuss about the one by one, one by one. So what do you, what do you mean by trot body? So did anyone ever about the trot body process? Not for the old batch, uh, for the new one. OK, so uh, what do you mean by trot body? Maybe which is not a regular vendor. So I will I'll give one queue. Okay. I'll give one queue. Okay. Imagine, imagine. Okay, Flipkart, Amazon, and uh, these are all people they are using the start party sales. Middle middleware, sir. Yeah, it's not. It's like of the middleware, but not to completely. Okay, I will tell you the process. What is the start party? Okay. So I am the person who receiving the order from the customer. OK, I'm receiving the order from the customer, but I'm not a supplier. I'm not supplying the goods to the customer. So generally when you order you when you order the stock, OK, the supplier will send the goods to you, right? Generally, this is the process, right? P2P. So when you order, 
they they will send to you but in the third part what will be happen i will get the order from customer but i am not supplying the goods to the customer i am asking to the vendor to supply goods to the customer okay so that means i am not directly directly dispatching goods to the customer i am asking to the vendor please send directly to the customer why because i am telling the process why because uh, can you go on mute uh, if you have any doubts you can unmute and you can do i'm just getting some sound can you go on mute yeah hello so you can go on mute i'm just keeping mute okay sir okay now imagine imagine did you ever did you anybody knows about that imagine will not deliver the goods to you most of the product so he will take order from the online boss okay i just ordered that okay iphone mobile so the imagine will inform to the nearest vendor who can supply the goods okay and uh, he will inform that okay boss you, uh, we got order iphone xr okay so please dispatch this goods to the customer okay so the reason why because uh, that's why that's why you can see that in amazon the same product with the multiple prices from the multiple vendors so it is not dispatching from the one vendor uh, it's not dispatching from the amazon but you can see that amazon cover the packing cover but the stock which we receiving from the local vendors or it might be from the different location but it's not from the amazon why because okay so they are handling n number of goods okay they have their own stores okay but it's only for the limited products not for all products some products it will be dispatched directly from the from the vendor to customer if suppose uh, let's take example i order something like uh, uh, samsung uh, refrigerator so when i order in the amazon Okay, Amazon will inform to the Samsung stores, boss. We got this order. Please dispatch to this uh, customer deliver. So here, we are not directly to dealing with the customer when the stock sending to the customer. We are not sending to the customer. Vendor sending to the customer. That is the we call third party. Okay. So if you want to see the diagram, I will show you one diagram. Okay, now if you see this one, okay, we got the sales order from the customer. Okay, I'm the person. I'm the dealing with the customer. I I got order from the customer. So immediately what I did, I once I got the sales order, I just informed to the create a purchase order with reference to sales order and informing to the vendor. Okay, and the vendor will dispatch directly to the customer. It's not moving from the my stock. It's moving from the vendor stock to customer. Okay, but when the payment will be when the, the payment will be happen, okay, the Amazon will take the payment from you directly, okay, and Amazon will pay amount to the vendor. Suppose it is hundred rupees cost, okay, one it is hundred rupees cost, then he charging one fifty rupees from the customer. The remaining balance fifty rupees is the profit for the Amazon. Clear? Did you understand that? Any doubts on this one? Clear, yes, sir. It's clear, right? Third party. Now, so I will write here. Okay. Uh, we receiving order from customer. We receive. Okay. Uh, I'm just putting mute. Okay. 
so when you have a question you just to ask and you can uh, again you can go for mute okay okay so this is the uh, third party procurement and coming to the consignment process so what do you mean by consignment process so vendor consignment process is nothing but like a okay we we requesting vendor to keep the stock in the premises okay suppose i have i have requirement 1000 uh, kgs of uh, rice okay 1000 kgs of rice but might be i don't have money okay i cannot pay immediately the amount okay and uh, it might be the uh, some other reasons okay i requested vendor to keep the stock vendor dispatch the stock up to our premises to our company okay but we will not pay any amount now to vendor so when i will pay when i will pay when i am utilizing or consuming goes to customer okay these three cases okay then only i will pay amount to vendor vendor for withdraw quantity withdraw stock whatever we do withdraw stock that means withdraw withdraw means whatever we consume the stock withdraw or consume the stock so did you understand here the point here did you understand this point here why because see what will be happen some cases some of the products very expensive okay but still i am running the my business okay i just want to be uh, maintain the stock in the my premises my warehouse i just need to be maintain some stock in the my warehouse but these are just too expensive so i am not uh, i am not i don't know whether i can get the orders from the customers might be i, I can I, i need that recommend might be i don't know right so what i can say i can requesting to the vendors boss please keep some uh, stock in my premises okay whenever i'm just consuming the stock or whenever i'm selling the selling to the customer okay i will pay the amount whatever we sold out the product okay i can pay the amount immediately to whatever we sold so can you give me some example what what exactly uh, which business they are, they are using this product this process did anyone ever about this one which process it, we are using this consignment i heard many of the fertilizers uh, will do the same is it fertilizers you are doing same okay but th those are not expensive right maybe uh, you are looking into like expiry if it is expired then what will be happen in the fertilizer that will be returned to the vendor Okay, so maybe yeah, manufacturer. that might be in a different business process, right? So here, what will be happen? You can take the electronic goods. So if you go to any nearest store, uh, Reliance Digital or somewhere, okay, if you can see that there are so many electronic goods, washing machines, laptops, refrigerators, okay, cleaning and uh, um, might be mobiles. There are so many, so many goods are there. So these are too expensive products. Okay, if I just need to be maintain these goods in the premises, okay, I need to be uh, I need to be maintain some amount, right? Like one crore, two crores goods I have to sold out. Okay, so here what will be happen? I'm requesting to the vendor. Okay, suppose I'm requesting to the Samsung department boss. Okay, please uh, keep some stock in my premises. When I can get the order from the customer. i will dispatch this goods and i will immediately paying to you right why because 1 lakh rupees product if i want to buy immediately from you if i need to pay immediately to you that is is very difficult to run my business 
Okay. If I get the order from the customer, I can sell and I can pay amount to you. Okay. So that is that why the one general scenario we can use. One more is we can use for the cement industry. Okay. So there was suppose let's assume that there was a I need uh, 10,000 uh, bags of the cement which is required for my construction. Okay, 10,000 bags means you have almost you need to spend for the 10 lakhs, 20 lakhs rupees. So it is very difficult to you pay to amount to immediately to the vendor. Okay, so I'm just requesting that boss, I will buy all the products from you only. So please keep some uh, 10,000 bags in my location. Okay, suppose tomorrow today I just use the 100 bags, then I will pay immediately 100 bags to you. But there was some agreement like, okay, within the one month I will use. Within a two months, I will use. Might be within a three months, I can pay a moderate amount. That okay? There might be some agreements, but this was the agreement between a uh, vendor and you. So, boss, you just keep the stock in my premises. Okay, I'm good with that. Okay, please. Uh, uh, whenever I'm utilizing that product, okay. When I'm whenever I'm consuming the product, I will pay the amount to you. Okay, so that is the vendor consumption process. So mostly we are using for the electronic goods, expensive items. We are using this consumption process. Best example is this one, electronic goods. And for third party, the best example is. Imagine all those generally, OK? Any doubts on this consumption process? Okay, hope you uh, hope it is fine. Uh, uh, sir, can you share the screen again? I'm not able to see. Is that suddenly okay. it got disappeared? You. It is the only problem with you or everyone? I guess only with me. And I think uh, maybe you can disconnect and connect again. You are connected video call. Connected video call. Is that? I have tried, but again it's. Not connecting. One second. Okay, guys. Uh, okay. Uh, I have one more meeting at seven o'clock. Okay, it is almost uh, only five minutes. We have left. Okay. So my question here, guys. So uh, how many of you guys are okay with morning section? I think I got uh, confirmation from Sunil. He's okay with that morning. And uh, Not was that... yes, Sunil Kumar. Yeah. Sir, mo morning session is not possible, sir. Okay. Okay. Morning. Okay. And for other people's. Uh, morning, I don't think so it's possible. So you said uh, uh, it is good morning, right? No, 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 sir. I said it is good in the early sessions, like this, like six o'clock. Okay, evening is good. Uh, Not morning. No, right? sir. Okay. Yeah. Then I think we'll continue in the evening only. No problem. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, Okay, so any questions on today? 